I wanted to start playing around with universal joints in Creole Parametric, and I found this model of a double cardon universal joint. Let me show you how I was able to do this mechanism. First, I found the original files on traceparts.com. I did a search for universal joint. I found this one from Schmersel and then downloaded a step file from it. And there's some tricks that I did in order to get all the components the way that I wanted to. And I'll show you that trick in a, another video. So here I am in Creo Parametric. Let's start off by making a brand new assembly. I'll click on the new button and choose assembly. And I'll call this my universal double cardin. And I'm just going to uncheck use default template just to make sure that I am using the default template that I want to use. Let's turn on the display of all our different datums. Also, I am going to confirm the set of units that I am in by going to my dialog box. And right now I'm in millimeters. I'm going to change that. I want to make sure that I am in English units. Let's set that and convert and close out of here. That is good. I just make sure I'm full screen. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is put in some datum axes for reference. Let me turn off the display of the coordinate system. And the first th one that I'm going to use is going to be an axis. I'm going to have it at the intersection of front and top. So let's create an axis. And actually, I want it at the intersection of top and right. Let me hold down the control key. I'll go to the properties tab and I'm going to rename this my input shaft axis and then click the OK button for my output shaft axis let's create a datum plane offset from top and half an inch is good let's go to the properties and this is going to be my output shaft axis actually that's the output shaft plane and click the OK button. Now with that plane still selected, I am going to create an axis, hold down the control key and select the datum plane for right. And this is going to be my output shaft axis. And click the OK key. Let's zoom in over here and I no longer need to see the plane, so let's hide. I'm going to be very aggressive about hiding my different references as I'm doing this to reduce my screen clutter. Let's bring in the first yoke, the input yoke. I will click on the assemble button. Let me go to in session. And here is the yoke part. And I'm just going to drop it on here. And so for this one, it's going to be allowed to rotate about one degree of freedom. So let's select that we want to do a pin connection and for the pin connection I'm going to select the yoke center axis and the input shaft axis let me figure out where everything is zoom in there we go and the next thing that I'm going to align are going to be for my placement to eliminate translation I am going to select out of here. I think one of my datum planes is hidden. Let's select the datum plane called front out of there and then ASM front. There we go. There we have it in here. And my connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark. So right now, again, I'm just using some default datums of or excuse me, my, uh, yeah, my default datums in order to define the pin connection because right now this is my only component in there. Let me turn off the display of everything real quick. If I go to the drag components and click on here, you can see, yes, indeed, it can rotate. I'm going to position it like so for the next component that I'm going to place in here, which is going to be the first cross. And let me turn on my axis display and my plane display. Let's turn off the display of some of these other datums. And so for the next one, oops, let me refit everything. Might help if I turn on my spin center so stuff doesn't zoom out. 
on me. For bringing in the cross, let's click on the assemble button. And again, in session, I have the cross part. And let's just drop it on the screen about over here. I'm going to rotate it a little bit because I see one of the planes that I want to use. Just want to make sure I'm looking at this the way that I want to look at it. And so for rotating this, this is going to be again a pin connection. So let's use the user to find drop down list and change to pin. I'll go to the placement tab for the axes that I'm going to align. Let me pick this axis over here and this axis through the middle of the part. Then to eliminate translation, I will select this center plane from the cross and then this plane over here. There we go. Our connection definition is complete. And that's good for this component, so I'll hit the check mark. So now, again, we're going to be able to have this, the main primary yoke, rotate, and this rotate as well. Let's now go for our next component that we're going to assemble. And again, just to reduce my screen clutter, let me make sure that I hide features pretty quickly as I'm going through here uh, to reduce my screen clutter. No longer need the input shaft axis. Let's see. I don't think I need that one. And from the cross, next I'm going to put on a, another component in here. And, yep, I've got everything I need in here. So let's now click on the assemble button. And I'm going to grab the center yoke. And... Just rotate a little bit approximately how I want it in here. And so again, we're going to have a pin connection. Let me go to the center yoke part over here. And for the pin connection, I'll go to user to find and then pin. Let's select this axis here and this axis. Now to eliminate our translation, go to the placement tab over here, translation. And actually, that's not the plane that I want to use. Let me remove it out of here. Nope, that's not the plane that I want to use. I forgot to make them visible before I started this. There it is. That's the plane that I want to use. The datum plane called top. And then let's select this datum plane from the cross component. And that gets it in there. All right, let's hit the check mark. Again, let's start hiding some more of these datums just so I don't confuse myself like I just did. Okay, I will need that one for my next cross. Let's see, and let's see, what was that? Top, that's the one that I'm going to use as well to eliminate translation for the second cross. And now let's hit the assemble button and we're going to use that cross component again. And right now it's using a predefined interface. What happened is that when I assembled it one time, I have a config option, create temp interfaces turned on. And so it remembers how I assembled it the previous time and it automatically uses that again. And that's fine, I'm okay because I'm gonna assemble it the same exact way. And then this plane to this plane over here. So that puts it in here, that is good. Let us hit the check mark. And now let me turn off my plane display once more. I'm gonna bring in another yoke on the end over here. And for this one, it's going to have two connections in here. Let's hit the assemble button and bring in the yoke. And again, right now, I, because I have that option on, it wants to use a temporary interface, which was the first pin connection that I put in here. I am going to change to placing this manually. And instead of a pin connection, I'm just gonna use a cylinder connection and first off, let's rotate it so that it's facing the right way and just position it a little bit better. And for this one, 
I hit the center axis, let me just grab it out of the model tree, and I'm going to assemble it to that assembly level datum axis called the output shaft axis, and the connection definition is complete, so that is good for that one. And I want to add in one more connection in here. Let me rotate this so it's oriented properly. And one thing that will help me is to use the drag option to positioning these closer before I add in my second connection. Let's hit the check mark out of here. And I am just taking a look at things over here. Let me go to this yoke component and make sure that I am having everything visible that I need to be uh, visible in here. And just going to make sure, yep, I do have an axis down there. I just was not able to see it. What I can do is I can select this axis and then edit definition. To make sure it's bigger on the screen, I'm going to adjust the display and go to reference and then pick. Eh, yeah, that does make it bigger. Let me see if I can have something else that'll help out. Now nah, it looks like everything here is about the same size, but as long as it's bigger, that is the important thing so that I can see it. Now let's go back to this assembly window over here. And I want to use the drag to reposition it a little bit better. So let's drag this up. And what will help me with this is by going to the Constraints tab in the Drag dialog box. And first I'm going to add in and align two entities. And I'm going to pick this center axis of the cross and the center axis of the output shaft. That is good. Let's put in a, another align. And this one is going to be for that. Let me hold down the control key and select this one over here. And so you'll notice it adjusted the positions of the components. So now everything is close together. And that is just to make sure that I don't have any issues when I go back to the yoke over here and then edit definition. Let's go to the placement tab. And I want to have, for this case over here, I think I can just go away with a, another cylinder connection for ease. And then just pick the yoke cross mount axis. And then also the axis for the cross part itself. And now my connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark over here. Let's turn off our datum axis display to unclutter the screen. And let's now put in a motor and run an analysis. I will go to Applications, Mechanism. You can see the different joint axes on the screen. Here's the joint axis for my input yoke. I can select it and then from the mini toolbar choose to create a motor. For simplicity, I'm going to drive the angular velocity. From the Profile Details tab, I can change this to be 90 degrees per second, so it'll do one rotation every four seconds. Now I will hit the check mark. I can click on Analyses, and from the Mini Toolbar, choose the New button. I'm going to change the type from the default Positional Analysis to the True Kinematic Solver. Let's run this for 20 seconds. And let's use a higher frame rate of 25. For the motors, we're going to have that one motor run the entire time. Now I'll hit the Run button. Okay, we're getting some bad motion in here. I thought I could get away with the cylinder constraint. Let's let this run over here. And now let's go back out of here. And like before, I am going to use the drag components and go to the constraints tab, turn on my axes, and first off, let's, oops, I was trying to rotate at the same time. Let's go to the drag components, constraints, align two entities, and align this and this. That's good. And then for another align, let's select this and this axis over here. That's good. I'm going to close out of here. Now let's correct that 
bad con connection that I made. I will edit definition. Yeah, I was trying to take a shortcut. The second one over here, instead of using a cylinder connection, let's go to turn on the plane display and change the cylinder to a pin connection. And so for the translation, let's use in here the datum plane called top from the cross. And I don't think I have it visible from the yoke. Let me guess that. Hopefully it's top. Yay, it was the right one. And so now, you know what? Let's just try deleting this. Do a new set and let's do a pin connection. And so for the pin connection, let's select the cross axis and then the yoke axis. For the translation, let's select the front from there, or excuse me, top from there. Nope, top is definitely the wrong one from the yoke. Nope, it's not front. Let's try right. There we go. Now our connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark. Yes, it would have been much easier if I just had unhid the planes to begin with. All right, let's go back to mechanism mode, applications, mechanism, and go to the analyses, create a new analysis, type kinematic again, run for 20 seconds, crank up my frame rate, and hit the run button. There we go, much better. Sometimes I like showing you mistakes. I'm not going to act like I, I plan to make that mistake, but it is nice to, when you make a mistake, to be able to show people that you can get out of the mistake that you made. All right, we click the OK button. Now we can go to playbacks and hit the play button from analysis definition one. We can crank up the speed over here, hit the play button, and there you can see how we're able to transmit the motion from our input shaft to the output shaft using this double carden universal joint. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.